Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, welcome everybody, uh, whether you're here live or um, watching this in the replay. Uh, thank you and acknowledge you for taking the time to uh, to be here and to listen to this, because I know there's a lot of other things that you can be doing. And uh, you're not only honoring me with your time, but also yourselves in uh, following through on what's been put in your heart to get out to the world and and getting that, um, taking the right steps to get that out. <clears throat> so thank you for that. Uh, what I'm going to be talking on today, let me just share my screen and we'll get right to it. So of course, uh, last week I was talking about uh, my journey and the you know four key distinctions that uh, really helped me to catapult my sales um, to uh, you know from about a hundred months to a thousand a month now. And uh, this this week I decided I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the mind game and having the right mindsets because that mainly makes a huge difference in your success. And at this point, for everybody who's on this call, everyone who's currently on the call is just in the beginning stages. So it's a big part of getting your book written in the first place is, is your mindset. So um, no, that's not what I wanted. This one. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So welcome again. Um <clears throat> So, and the, the, the reason that um, I'm doing this call and the last call, uh, as I mentioned before, is uh, we've just, my wife and I, we've just put out our eighth book or her eighth book. Uh, that would be our 11th um, combined. And, you know, immediately shot up to number one bestseller on Amazon. And everybody's always like, how do you do it? So, you know, I used to just do one-on-one -on -one consultations with people, and uh, it's uh, it's a great way to bless them. But I thought this would be a more effective way of just getting the words out and empowering other authors uh, and helping them to get their message out into the world. Because I feel that's so important that like there's been something that's been put on your heart, you know, for you to get out, and you know that's your gift your unique voice, your unique journey. And so it's so important that you do get that out into the world. And uh, so I just want to help facilitate that and help you uh, to do that. Um, <clears throat> so here's a quote, which you know ties into today's topic. Um, it's such a confidence trick, writing a novel. The main person you have to trick into confidence is yourself. This is hard to do alone. Uh, by Zaddy Smith. And who am I? Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name's Preston Squire, and I started publishing books um, in 2014, uh, just shortly. Uh, what I was working a government job uh, for our provincial ministry here, and they were cutting back, and so they laid me off. And so I was like, how do I, <laughs> how do I make this work now? So somebody was teaching a course on how to publish a book on Amazon. Uh, so I took that much like you're doing right now. And um, although I had a bunch of books in the works, I didn't have any finished uh, because my books were never good enough. But my wife had a book that she'd completed and put on a shelf and was just kind of sitting there gathering dust. So I took that. We cleaned it up, put it on Amazon, used the strategies that were effective at that time. But unfortunately, those particular strategies no longer work because Amazon's changed how they do their business and algorithms. Um, but it was enough to get us started. 
and you know we found an audience and at that time we were doing 30 to 100 books a month depending on if i was running a promotion or not on it um and we kind of carried on like that for a few years uh thinking that we were doing pretty good and it's it's pretty good because I, I know that's uh, hundreds thousands uh possibly even millions of authors out there who don't even sell that much but in 2019 um we had four books out and we really weren't doing much better and i decided to really get serious and you know i just started really learning and applying everything i was learning and you know applying those principles that i taught you last time um and you know increase the sales of those books from between 300 percent to 3500 percent increase in sales of those books and so if i can do it you can do it too um because those principles apply to to anybody and to all books um so i mean there's there are other things than that things like reviews and uh you know it's got to be a good book in the first place but there are a lot of key distinctions key factors that if you know what you're doing if you understand how amazon works and how the book industry now today works um you can really you know put things to your advantage whereas a lot of people are just like they just put a book out there and we're going to talk about this more today um and then they wonder why it doesn't sell so if you're here I congratulate you because you're here to learn and I'm feel privileged to teach you so the main points we're going to cover today is and it's all kind of mindset stress things because if you get it right here this is going to translate for you so uh writing for you writing for your readers the fatal mindset mistake that most authors make and the importance of cultivating curiosity so let's get into those so the first thing is writing for you and this is a key area where write re, write authors myself included because i've done this often trip themselves up is because we are writing for ourselves and we're all spirit soul which is kind of mind and body people but it's the the mind piece the ego your id you know whatever you want to call it that really gets us in trouble during the writing process because that part of your your mind your ego its job is to protect you its job is to shelter you its job is to keep you safe and writing something and putting it out in front of potentially hundreds or thousands or even millions of people does not seem safe so your you know your mind's going to start playing tricks on you like are you really equipped to do this is anyone actually going to listen to me is my writing any good you know maybe i should leave this for somebody else there's all kinds of other books already out there on this topic you know why is mine going to be different why is like, anyone going to care you know what if somebody says something bad about it you know and all of these things and these things are just going to naturally come up for you and the, these kind of thoughts are the things that trip most authors up and why so many people you know uh, i mean how many of you know somebody who's been talking about doing a book but hasn't actually gotten it up you know anyone like that because everybody wants to do a book but not many people actually finish the book and get it out and this is why because it's human to not feel good enough and no matter who you are you don't feel good enough at something even elon musk the richest man in the world currently you know if you say business he feels good enough but if you you know throw something else at him completely that's not in the business world you know if you ask him to write a book for example right now he's going to be thinking the same thing uh I don't know how to write a book 
can I just get a ghostwriter to do it? <laughs> you know, right? Because that's just human nature. But when it comes to writing a book, I do want you to write for yourself for the first draft. What you, that passion you have, those ideas that you have, whether it's a fiction or a nonfiction, get that out. Just write it all out. Uh, the guys who I know you're on the call right now, you guys are doing a great job because you all have your chapter summaries. And that's a terrific place to start is, you know, writing out your chapter summaries and then sub points for those chapters and giving yourself that starting structure is a perfect way to start. And then just brain dump, just get everything out, all of those ideas, everything that's in your heart, get it out, put it down, just commit like 30 minutes or an hour a day um, and just get it out and be consistent. And I know things go crazy and if things go crazy, just if, if it's one paragraph or one sentence, keep that consistency, just get it out, you know, just keep working on it and get it all out. And as you're doing that, I want you to write that for you, write the book that you want to see, that you want to tell that in, of importance to you. Because at this stage of the game, you're writing for yourself. But once you got that first draft out, you're writing for the reader right? Take yourself out of the picture. Um, why are we writing for the reader? Well, first off, the, your reader is your why. So let me elaborate on that. The, the, the reason you want to tell the story generally is if it's a nonfiction book, is because you think you have some, you feel you have something important to share that will help other people, right? Um, and it's a lot easier to get yourself to get out of your comfort zone and to take action if you're doing this for somebody else instead of doing this for yourself. So at this point, once you kind of gotten that first draft out and now you're really starting to work on the book, going through the various editing processes, you know, you want to stay focused on the reader that you're writing this for them that this is going to be a blessing for them. And it's important for them for you to get this done. And, you know, one good thing to do is to get, make a commitment that you're getting this book out, especially once you got a first draft out. Because once you get a first draft out, you will feel pretty comfortable putting out a, I'm having this book out by this date. And if you're bold enough, you can even go on to Amazon if you, you know, have to get a cover design. But you could go onto Amazon and put it up for pre-sale like three months out. And now you have no choice. You must get this book done because people are going to start buying it. And you're committed to having this book out now. But yeah, at this point, you want to, you know, really keep that front and center. You know, so if it's a nonfiction, you're writing something to help them, to bless them in some way. And if you're writing a fiction book, then you're writing something to entertain them to take them away from whatever it is in the world that's, you know, um, all the hardships of the world, you're giving them an escape from that and probably giving them some real uh, soul, food for the soul, right? And that's really important too. And we all go to fiction books, you know, to, to, to get that escape and to get that soul food. So you want to remember you're writing this for the readers and that you're going to make a difference in people's lives and you're going to educate them or you're going to entertain them, but you're going to make a difference in people's lives. And so that will help you to finish the process. That will help you to get over all of those doubts and concerns and naysays that your mind's going to do on you. The other thing though is, well, the first draft, it's good to write for yourself because you want to get out all your ideas and all your passions and everything. But writing for yourself isn't necessarily going to sell books. So when you're now revising it and editing it and changing it, you've got to be thinking about your end reader. And what does your end reader want? If it's a nonfiction book, 
what do they need, you know? And is what you're saying, you know, and this can go to all kinds of things, right? But as you're going through your book, you got to say, you know, am I breaking this down enough for them, right? Are they going to understand? Am I giving them all the steps they need? And am I talking too much uh, industry jargon? Um, you know, for example, if you're doing, if you're a chef and you're doing a book on how to cook, you know, uh, to the chef, a chef will tell you like the most important things in cooking is, uh, if, forgive me if I mispronounce this, uh, the maison pre, right? And so they could just talk about that matter of factly, you know, and just kind of sum it up in two sentences and move on. But you're going to have a whole bunch of reasons going there. The what? The maison, what? The what? What? They don't even know what it is, right? And for those of you who may not know, uh, that basically the maison pre is just having all your ingredients already prepped and ready to go. You know, because when you're cooking a fine meal, you cannot be in the middle of the meal going, oh, I need garlic running off, finding the garlic, chopping it up and throwing it in because you've already overcooked your food. So everything has to be ready and prepared, right? A chef, that's just, they know it, they live it, they do it. But for the reader, they don't know it. You've got to explain everything to them very simply, as if you're writing to a, for a three, grade three reader. Uh, and not condescending, of course, but just writing simply like you would for somebody in grade three. Because to them, it's new. So, you know, you got to keep in mind, what do they need? And if you're writing a fiction book, right? Are you being clear? Are the characters' motives clear, right? Um, are the plot points clear? Are, uh, you know, is all of these kind of details, is the reader getting what they need out of it? And more importantly, is it entertaining, right? And the biggest thing, and you know, and I don't have time to get into all these details of all writings, but for, Fiction writers, one of the biggest things to do is knowing to kill your babies. And what do I mean by that? And what I mean by that is the first draft, you're writing out everything that's in your mind and all your passions and everything you love. But now as you're going through it and you're redoing it with the reader in mind, you've got to be asking yourself, is this necessary? Does this further the plot? Is this revealing some key character detail that's important for this book? And what you will realize is you will have whole chapters or even whole characters that actually, well, it's super cool and it's super fun and it might be the most novel thing ever written. It does not serve the plot and it must be taken out. And that's what I mean by killing the, your babies, because a lot of those things that are near and dear to you, but they got to go because they're not serving the story. They're not serving the reader. It's just dragging your book on. And gen, genre expectations. So, you know, if you're writing whatever type of book you're writing, are you meeting the expectations of what a reader of that type of book is going to expect from that type of book? If, you know what I mean? So, you know, if it's a Western, they're going to expect a certain type of things to be happening. You know, almost expect there's got to be obligatory, you know, shootout um, type of thing. If it's a romance, well, there better be romance and there better be romantic tension in it, you know, and if it's a sci-fi, well, then there's got to be uh, science and fiction. Um, so, you know, you have to make sure that you're meeting those reader expectations, because if you're not, you're going to get a lot of complaints. People are going to leave you some bad reviews <clears throat> because what they bought the book for, they didn't get. Does that make sense? OK, now we're going to switch gears a little bit. And I'm going to talk about what I call the fatal mind mindset. And this is a mistake that so many writers are making right now today and this is you know having this mind shift it's really going to take you from a place of feeling stuck to 
um, a place of excitement. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the publishing industry was like when I started and what it's like now. So back when I first started writing books, uh, what you do is you'd write your book, rewrite it, edit it to the best as you can, because you can't send something with you know grammar and spelling mistakes. And then you would mail it off to a publisher. And then you would wait usually three to six months for them to get back to you. And somebody's gonna ask, well, can't you just send it to multiple publishers? You could, but it was considered very bad form. And if you were doing that, the expectation is you would tell them you're doing that. And then some publishers just won't even look at it. So really the intention was you'd send it to one publisher at a time and each publisher, because they all had huge piles of you know people sending in their books, it would take three to six months to read it and then get back to you. And they'll get back to you with one of three things. 95% chance you will get a form letter telling you they're not interested. 4% chance you will actually get something from the editor saying, hey, this is pretty good, but it was a whole list of suggestions on how to make it better. And then 1% chance somebody will actually want it. So what happens, right? You sent your book off, you know it's gonna be months. So you start on another book, but at some point you go back to the book that you've sent in with fresh eyes and you go, you know what? This could be better. I should change this, I miss these mistakes. And you clean it up because you know, most likely you're gonna get a rejection letter because everybody gets rejections. <laughs> Like nobody gets picked up on the first submission. And so you're fixing it up and improving it. So when you finally do hear back from that publisher, you're sending an even better copy to the next one. And while you're waiting for them, you know, you go back, you write your other book, you come back to this one, you clean it up some more, you make it even better with fresh perspective and fresh eyes, and you send that to the next publisher. And this typically went on for three to five years. And then finally, you get a publisher that says, okay, I like it. It's good. Make these changes. So you go and you make all these edits that they want. You send it back. And they finally say, okay, we will publish your book. Congratulations. You know, you go, you uh, sign the contract. You give them all the rights to the books. You go and have a nice dinner and celebrate with champagne. And then you forget about that book. You just put it completely out of your mind. And this is the right thing to do in this situation for two reasons. One, you don't own the book anymore. You have literally given them ownership of the book and they will do whatever they want with the book. Now, typically they're not gonna make major changes, but they could. If there's something in the book that they think is offensive or too risky or might alienate some readers, they'll change it. I'll like 100% they're going to have their own editors go over the book and re-edit it and change whatever they think needs to be changed. They're going to decide on the title. They're going to decide on the cover. And if you don't like it, well, too bad because they know what they're doing and you don't. And so you just got to put that out of your mind because otherwise it'll drive you a little bit nutty. And the second reason is because a traditional publisher only publishes a certain number of books a year and your book is gonna get slotted in and won't actually hit print for 18 months to two years down the road. So you can't even start marketing it yet. It's no point in really telling anybody about it yet because it's so far away. So you're gonna just get that out of your mind. You got your paycheck, you celebrated, you're on to the next book and you don't think about it anymore. Why am I telling you this? Because this is a fatal mindset that's carried on to today. So most publishers, most authors right now are no longer going through the traditional publishing route. And traditional publishers these days, most of them will not even take submissions from authors anymore. You have to get a literary agent. And literary agents really just want to see authors who already have an established following. So 
self-publishing really is the best route to go for most anybody who's you know doesn't already have an established following for them. But here's the thing: with self-publishing, we're doing the same thing. We're writing our books, we're rewriting our books, we're editing it. You know, if we're smart, we're getting a professional editor editor to edit our books, and then we're self-publishing at Amazon and we forget about it, and we're having our dinner and our champagne, and we said, yes, we got our book out. We're done. No, 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 no. You have just started. Because don't forget, the author, the old days going through the traditional route, that first draft that he did, that first copy he sent off to a publisher is not the book that got published. The book that got published was that first book edited about 10 to 20 times that finally got published. Now, in the old days, you might have some peer reviews, so some other writers look at it, and you might get some editors sending it back and saying, we'd like these changes, whether they're going to pick it up or not. Um, but otherwise, you're writing in a vacuum. So the thing with self-publishing is you're basically taking it to market on that first version of it. And most writers are taking it to market with that first version of it and then forgetting about it, washing their hands of it, moving on to another book. But it's not done yet. Do not, this is not the end of the journey for the book. This is the beginning of the journey for the book. And you will have one huge advantage that a traditional publisher, a traditional author, like published author doesn't have. And that now that you've actually gotten your book out into the world, out in front of people, you now have reader feedback. You have readers giving you feedback on what you've done. So that's going to go into my next point here which is you want to cultivate a mindset of curiosity, right? And when I say this, it's like, think of it, as I say, think of it as the beginning of the journey, not the end, right? You're going to get this book out. You're going to start getting feedback, real world feedback on this book now. And that re real world feedback will come in different ways. You'll get some word of mouth feedback from friends. And honestly, God love them. Most of your friends are useless because they're just going to tell you something nuts. <laughs> they rarely give you any useful criticism. Um, people on the internet, though, they will give you lots of criticism <laughs> and not be very nice about it, honestly. But that's okay. Because if you have a mindset that this is the beginning, then you can take whatever feedback you get and improve your book. And the great thing with self-publishing is unlike a traditional published book where you sold the rights to it and you can make zero changes to it now, none. Being self-published, you can change it at any time you want. So if somebody, you know, and I've had this happen. Somebody writes, you know, criticism that says, oh, I found all of these errors, blah, 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 blah. Great. Thank you. I now know about them. I'm fixing them in my book, and that's going to go out in the next edition. Uh, if, you know, we've had somebody, let me show you the book, actually. <laughs> So this was uh, my wife's book, and this is the most recent edition of it. Now, this is actually the fifth, fifth edition of this book. So what happened is she wrote the original book back in 2008, made some changes to it and re-released in 2011, and then went on a shelf, and I found it, and we edited it. Some more. So the first edition that went on to Amazon was the third edition of this book. And that went out. 
And once we got it out into the world and she started getting real world feedback on it and saw how people were going through it, she realized there was a fundamental problem with the book. And so some of you, I know some of you have, you know, follow my wife and you might be shocked, but between the first edition that went on Amazon, um, which is this one, this red cover, and this fourth edition, she completely changed the order of the her, she had like 21 days points. She completely rearranged the order of the 21 days, twice, because she realized that the order they were in originally, which were, you know, and this is a perfect example. She wrote it, what was on her heart, what was on her mind, all her ideas. She just got it out and then she got it out, right? She got it out on the paper, she got it out in the world. But once it was out in the world, she realized this isn't what her readers needed, right? The content was good, but just the order she was giving it to them didn't serve them. It was, and it was actually causing them to be tripped up and fail. So she corrected the order, she changed the order, and we re-released it as a fourth edition of the book, right? And we had that out for a couple of years. And, you know, we had, yeah, people point out some mistakes in it. We had one person complain, you know, that, oh, it says it's a Bible study, but there's this whole chapter and it's just, you know, talks about Nehemiah and da, 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 da. And you know what? They had a valid point. So that got changed, you know, and other feedback that people got of us got, you know, edited into what became the fifth edition of this book, uh, which is the edition that's out now. So it wasn't, you know, so this is now like a huge selling book, but it didn't start off this way, right? And this is where I want you to have your mindset that the book you're going to first put on Amazon is not going to be the finished product. It's going to be the first edition of that product. Because if you have that mindset, then it allows you to receive feedback differently. Because to be honest, you know, most authors, as soon as you get any kind of feedback that's critical, you know, it's hard. You want to cry, <laughs> you feel bad, you beat yourself up, um, you know, but if you realize that, okay, this was my first attempt, I'm now getting real world feedback, you can kind of be detached, you can separate yourself from the book, right, and realize that, what people are saying about the book, good, bad, or indifferent, is not a reflection of you personally as a person. It's just a reflection of your first attempt at getting this out, right? If it's a nonfiction book, you may realize there's a gap in the information. You haven't explained it enough, or you missed a step that they really, really need. That was obvious to you, but not obvious to them. Or you just need to explain some things better, make it clearer, or maybe you're over explaining some things. If it's a fiction book, you know, uh, some character might be too bland and you got to give them a little more flavor, or they might have too much flavor and should be, you know, toned down, like say Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars. <laughs> you know? um, or it could be your plot twist doesn't work. You put too much foreshadowing in and everybody sees it coming and nobody's surprised at it. So you got to kind of make it more of a surprise for them or maybe just a completely different plot twist at the end. Um, you know, or so there's all kinds of things, but you have to be open to the feedback and to making changes. Because when you're open to it, when you come into it with an understanding that this is your first draft, and just like that tr traditional published author, his first draft was not the one that got published. Just think, your first draft, even though we are putting it out into the world, we are putting it on Amazon and we are selling it, this isn't the final version of it. You're going to make it a better book once you have it out there. So... But one of the things you do have to do is you have to be a little detached from it. You have to separate the book from you, right? Judgment on the book is not judgment on you. So you kind of have to have that detachment and cultivate curiosity. 
have a mindset of curiosity. Why are people saying this? You know, is it selling? Is it not selling? Why is it not selling? Right? Ask yourself why, you know, have this kind of, and look at it, your book, your, you know, especially if it's your first book and you've never had a book out before, look at it like you would a science experiment, right? You put it out, you're going to see what happens, and then you're going to tweak it. You're going to make little changes to it, right? Um, you know, so if it's, let me, let me give you an example right now. Um, so I'm going to give you a real world example of what this might look like. And I'm just going to um, do it this way. So I've got some children's books out that I haven't done much with. Um, so if I go onto Amazon and I say, okay, these books aren't selling that well, you know, so I've tried some different copy on it. I've tried a few different approaches in my Amazon ads. They're selling, but they're not selling great. Is there something else I can do? So you know what? I'm going to do kids' books, uh, ages six to eight. Okay. Well, let's see what's going on. Like, is there something I'm missing? So I'm looking at these books. Okay. Silly jokes for kids. Never stop dreaming. So I assume that's about, you know, having imagination and stuff. Science book. You're an amazing girl. So girl empowerment inspiring stories for amazing boys well that's pretty direct as to what it is you know how to draw 101 things well we know immediately what that is ultimate puzzle challenge well that's direct mazes um you know okay charlotte's web's a classic that needs no introduction but you know kindness is my superpower what are we noticing about these books you know because somebody can put it in the chat what, what are we noticing about these books and the way they're titled? So nobody, okay. <laughs> so these books, my first book of planets, the title on, and these are all the best-selling books, right? That's what Amazon's showing me like, um, they're all titled in a way where it's very, very clear what it is that you're getting. Would you say that's fair? All these titles, it's very clear what this book is about. Now, I'm gonna look at my book. Here's my book. Without reading about it, what is this book about? Can you tell from the cover and the title? No, <laughs> you can't. It's a kiss to dream cat. What's it about? You can't tell. So here, you know, by being curious, by looking at what's out there, what is selling and what am I doing? I can say, okay, you know what? I need to make a change here to how I'm presenting this book because the way I've titled it and I did this book way back in 2014, you know, when, the way I've titled this and the cover image here, isn't telling prospective readers enough that they feel confident buying this book, right? So, okay, I gotta, you know, make some changes to the title and the cover and re-release this book and try something different. Now, re-releasing a book isn't gonna be your first approach. So that's gonna be like the last thing you're gonna try. Um, but, you know, I can, I can see this is a big stumbling block here for this book which is inhibiting sales. It's just that it's not clear to the reader what it's about. And so then they got to read, uh, you know, they got to read through all this to figure out what it's about, but who wants to do that? And when you're coming up with 10 books on your list and you see three that immediately, this is like, for me, those are the ones you're going to look at first, right? So, um, yeah, so the message is clear and the titles are descriptive. So, and that's what's lacking in my book that I did, right? So I'm going to redo this book now and I'm going to re-release it and it's going to be a lot, you know, um, I'm going to fix that, right? And this is the, the path that for us self-published authors, right? Now we tend to think, um, we think the path to success is going to look like this. We release our book, we sell a million copies. Straight line, 
from here to here, right? <laughs> right? We release the book and we sell a ton. And that's not the way it works. The work, it's actually more like this jagged line up and down where we're going to release a book. We're going to see what happens. We're going to maybe make some changes based on feedback. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to like try some Amazon ads and we're going to see what happens. You know, we'll maybe put on you know, a bit of different uh, copy in it to clarify for readers. And we're going to see what happens. And progressively, you will get the book to sell more and more and more. Right. But it's a journey. It's a journey. When you first release your book, you know, unless you have somebody who's knowledgeable and has done this a bunch of times working with you directly. Don't expect that it's going to be a bestseller out the gate. It's, you know, expect that it's going to be a process and that it's going to take some time to really understand how to bring out, how to connect with your fans. That's really what it's about. It's really just about connecting with your fans. What are they looking for versus what are you presenting them with? And do the two meet up, right? Is your title, is your cover, is your copy? telling the fans what they need to hear in order to feel co confident that this is the book that they want. Are they meeting up? Right. And your first stab at it, especially if you're brand new and never done it before, just it's probably going to be a little bit off. But if you keep this mindset that when you first get it out, this is the beginning of your journey, not the end. And you just stick with it and you keep fine tuning it learning from it, making improvements from it. And this is a blessing of being self-published is that you can, you can change it. You can edit it. You can do a complete re-release if you need. Uh, you can recover it, you know. Um, there's so much that you can do without needing anybody else's approval um, to make it better and better until you finally get that kind of click where it's just starting to sell and go. So is that helpful? Yes. All right. Yeah. So <clears throat> you just got to kind of cultivate this curiosity. And it's like, you know, what, what are those, you know, what can I do to continually to improve this book to, you know, get it so that you're a, the right audience is finding it. And when they find it, they have realized that this is the book that they're looking for, for whatever, you know, it solves their problem or it's going to give them the kind of story that they're looking for. Um, okay, so here's another quote. Um, I got to move some stuff from my screen because I can't even see it. You don't start off writing good stuff. You start off writing crap and thinking it's good stuff and then gradually you get better at it. <laughs> that's why i say one of the most valuable traits the rest is cut off here but it goes on to say the most valuable traits is persistence right and that's oh, really a huge trait to have a successful book is yes. sticking with it and being persistent mm -hmm. and not just you know and this is the mistake you know, see so many authors and i'm talking millions make if they just put their books out on Amazon and then they just, it's not selling and I don't know why. And they're done. They move on to another book that they're going to put out on Amazon and it's not going to sell much better because they haven't learned anything. They didn't learn from the first one because they didn't realize it's really the beginning of the process, not the end. You know, and, and again, in the old days with traditional publishers, this kind of editing period and betting period was kind of built into the process because it took you three to five years from when you first finished your book to when you actually found someone willing to publish it. And in that whole time, you're working on making this book better because you want somebody to finally publish it. In today's world, when we're getting that book out, you're still putting out that very first edition that nobody wanted to publish, right? <laughs> so you gotta just figure, it's going to take you a little bit of time and a couple of revisions and maybe a couple of edition changes, right? So you go from your first edition, you do an improved version, and then finally you do your best version of your book that's connecting with your audience 
and sell. And then now you're making money every month. You feel like a real author because people are buying your books every month. And, you know, when you go to your next book, you've already learned a whole bunch of stuff and you're going to put out a much better uh, book with making a whole lot less mistakes the second time around than you do the first time. But it's all good because it's second book, you're going to learn a few more things. So that's uh, that's my presentation. Was that helpful for you guys? Did you find that useful? Yes. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, really, I, it's, it's, it's the Lord's just put it on me to help authors to you know especially kingdom authors but authors any authors who have the message and who really wants to impact the world to help you guys you know make your books in a way that makes them uh relate to the readers you know know your audience as we talked the first time you know understand who is your audience you know talk to that audience have a compelling uh have a title that speaks to them and is SEO'd, have a compelling cover that is, you know, attracts attention, and looks professional, and you got to pretty much run Amazon ads, at least at first, in order to get in front of people so that people can start buying it and start getting you into the Amazon flow that Amazon recognizes that this is actually both people will buy and start showing it natively. Um, so uh, I've decided though to go like, it, it's just been on my heart to take this one step further and to put something together to help authors to you know, really get the skills. And you know, I had to go through a huge learning curve that took me years to learn everything that I've learned uh, and to really kind of shrink that down for you and make it as easy for you so you can have a lot more success, a whole lot easier than, than, than I did. Would that, you know, uh, be helpful for you? Um, so there's four kind of key things that, you know, I'm putting together. One is a very comprehensive course on everything you need to know in order to publish a book in today's world, right? From how to write it to how to, you know, the nuts and bolts of how to publish it on Amazon, and Ingram and get it out to hundreds of different publishers like these stores all over the world. Um, how to be a bestseller. I know this is a big one for a lot of people. I just got in my email today and other persons, you know, get my book course on how to be a best-selling book, $600 for that, for that. Just that, just how to be a bestseller book. I'm going to throw that in complimentary because um, I've had five books now be bestselling books and I'm using different techniques. So I'm going to show you all the different ways to get your book to be an Amazon bestseller, how to win awards like the four of our books have done already, how to, um, well, let me go through it. But I'm going to comprehensive course, giving you all the nuts and bolts, very simple video lessons. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to keep it very simple for you with exercises so that you always feel confident that this is something that you can do. I'm going to go live weekly, just like this one, and answer your questions and give you some teachings and really help you through the process from where you are now to the end result and getting your book selling on Amazon. And there'll be a private Facebook group. So in between calls, if you got questions, you can ask, you can ask people in the group, you can ask me and I'll respond to you. And because I've been in this industry for a while, I know a whole bunch of other publishers and authors and stuff. And so I'm going to have a monthly guest. I'll have somebody come on and speak to their particular genre that they do. So, you know, whether you're doing a fiction book or a nonfiction book or this, you know, whatever you're trying to do, I'll, you know, keep having guest speakers come on and talk about different aspects of the industry so that you'll find somebody who's talking exactly on what you're doing. Uh, so here's some of the things we're gonna cover. So I talked about some of these already. 
Facebook ads, I will do. I've been doing Facebook ads as well. So I'm going to show you some different styles for nonfiction and fiction books to do Facebook ads. Um, how to do an easy store setup. So if you've got a website, and I'll probably do something on just putting together a simple website, but how to have an easy store set up on your website. You don't have to worry about dealing with state taxes or anything like that. It's all taken care of for you. It's kind of, you just set it up and let it go. And it's really easy. Um, getting, you know, getting reviews. This is a big one. Many, many authors struggle with getting people to leave reviews for their books. And there are some very simple techniques that you can use to do, to get good reviews. Um, well, to get reviews, good reviews are going to depend on your book actually being good. But I assume it's going to be, especially if I'm working with you. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Um, well said. <laughs> um, but for example, this book is now over a thousand reviews for it, right? Um, so there's, yeah, simple ways to, you know, get people to leave reviews uh, on your book. I'm going to teach you how to do different kind of book promotions, um, like 99 cents promotions, free book promotions. Uh, free book, just pay the shipping promotion. So all the different kind of, you know, book promotion kind of things that you see out there, I'll teach you how to do them, how to get awards, um, you know, interior book design, where to find talent. If you're looking for, you know, cover designers or stuff, I'll teach you some of the best places to go to find those people or best places to go to do them yourself. Um, and more. So this is going to be an organic thing. I'm just going to keep adding to it uh, as I go on. And as new things come up, I'll, you know, do that. TikTok is a big one now for authors. Um, so I'll do something on, you know, using TikTok to get your book out. Um, audiobooks. That's a whole new thing for authors now, too. That's a new big thing. So right now, as we speak, this, I'm getting an audiobook made for this. So I'll be putting together. Uh, course on that as well. Um, so well, I don't have a, <laughs> I need a value proposition screen. So let me go back. So all of that that I'm talking about, um, this alone, uh, you know, most people would be paying, charging you like a $1,000 uh, for something like this, especially with live coaching uh, involved in it. Um, and then these are all kind of bonus things I'm going to be building in as I go along. And as I said, uh, just today, you know, somebody's promoting just how to get, you know, your book up to number one on Amazon. Um, I'm going to put that in here. That's going to be one of the things I teach. Um, they were charging $600 just for that. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not about, you know, uh, using some hack to artificially get your book to number one for a brief moment so that you can just put that feather in your cap. However, it's a part of the tools in your tool belts, you know, for being a professional author. So if you can, you know, why wouldn't you want to, of course, and it feels great. <laughs> you know, we've had a lot of these books, this book hits number one all the time. And we've driven like a number of our books up to the number one on Amazon. So I'll teach you how to do that as well. And so all of these courses, you know, Facebook ads, I mean, that alone is usually like a $600 course. It's at least another $1,000 more in absolute value to you. And because this is, you guys would be getting in on the ground floor. So I'm going to be building this out with you. And, you know, because uh, anybody who joins now, you're going to be a founder. I'm, I'm going to build this to suit your needs first. So wherever you're at, you know, if you're all beginners, I'm going to be, you know, doing targeting stuff that you need right now in your journey. Um, if you're a little further on, I'm going to, you know, put in stuff that's important to you uh, and then build it out from there. So because this is, um, you're going to be joining in on the ground floor as I'm building this, I'm doing a one-time special offer where it's only $297 for lifetime access. 
Uh, I won't be doing weekly calls lifetime. <laughs> I'll be doing weekly calls at least for the first three months as I'm building the content. And then I'll probably go to about twice a month or once a month. Um, so, you know, people who are joining later on, I'm going to be selling this for a lot more and they're going to get less actually as far as personal contact. Um, but because this is something I'm just starting here, because it's really been put on my heart to, you know, empower Aussies to have more success and to get your message out into the world. Um, I'm, I'm putting that together. So uh, if you're interested in that, if that sounds like something that would benefit you, uh, sellmorebooksacademy.com is the website. Um, and so you can just go there, sellmorebooksacademy, all one word, dot com. And you can sign up there. Uh, the signups will only be open until the 10th. Um, and after that, I'm going to take it down. I'm going to be working with some people who signed up and, you know, building up the content. And then I'm going to re-release -re it later on. And it'll be more money than that, for sure. Um, but okay, so I'm going to done with that. Um, and I'm going to open the floor up to questions. So if anybody's got any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, whether it's about anything that I presented today or anything to do with book writing or publishing or marketing, uh, feel free to ask and we'll go for up to another half an hour. So anyone with a question? Um, I do. It's Amy. Um, so Michelle and I are writing the book together. Mm -hmm. So is there any way that you would offer any type of like one-on-one -on -one coaching? Because we're going to have to learn how to transition back and forth to the writing yeah. or how we do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if you want to engage me for one-on-one -on -one coaching uh we can absolutely do that if uh, obviously that would be more mm -hmm. um i'm not doing myself any favors here <laughs> but um you might see how much you know because i'm going to be doing a weekly call to begin with uh you know depending on how many people are joining in on those calls you might get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time anyways but if you need more absolutely we, i can um i'll put something together for you Okay. I have one. Sure. I, are you going to be willing to take on the role as, as literary agent if we can't find one? You So if you're looking for a literary agent, mm -hmm. so you're hoping to get traditionally published? If, if, if necessary. I mean, you know, like, like, like you, you've given us, you know, uh, a number of options, you know, mm -hmm. self-publishing, you know, seems to be the trend now, but Still, if 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 at some point we go the traditional route and yep. needed one, is that a role that, that you would be willing to assume? Um. So I'm not a literary agent, and um, yeah, I'm not I'm not interested in becoming one. It's it's a different skill set, and okay. I mean they just they just know all the publishers, all the different editors, at all the different publishers. And they know what those editors like and, you know, what's like most likely to sell with them. And then they're just looking for books that will fall into that kind of gotcha. you know, what they think they can sell to those editors. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as I said, these days, one of the things they put a lot of weight on is, you know, does the author have an established following? Mm -hmm. You know, so do you have a Facebook following? Do you have an email list? Do you have you know, are you a known name? Uh, in other words, because it just right. makes their jobs easier. Right. Um, so this might surprise you, but traditional publishers, 80% of the 80% of the books that they put out don't sell, mm -hmm. right? Even though they have professional editors picking and choosing which ones that they're going to publish, most of the books, the vast majority of the books that they put out don't make it past the first print run they just don't sell well enough and they just stop selling them many many cases you know you'll see them with a little corner clipped off because they just discard the books because they can't even get the bookstores to buy them mm -hmm. um so they really survive on the 80 20 rule right 
20% of their books are profitable and 20% of those 20 are huge hit books. Those are the Stephen Kings and the J.K. Rowland and the Danielle Steeles. And those 5% pay for all the failures mm-hmm. and generate their profit. Gotcha. Right? So yeah, getting in with a traditional publisher, I mean, it was always, always difficult. It's just becoming more so. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'll, you know, I can definitely help you kind of get your book to a good state so that you can submit it to literary agents, it, you know, if that's the route you want to take and, you know, have a much better chance of success with that. Mm. You know, but uh, at the same time, if you want, you can just self-publish it and get it out and still sub- be submitting it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, sometimes that's a route that you see happens. Uh, not my favorite book, but Fifty Shades of Grey started off self-published. And once it started selling, they had a lot of traditional publishers vying to, you know, care, take to, to publish that book for them. So gotcha. yeah, that's that's another route that happens now is that, you mm-hmm. know, they'll see something that's selling and then they'll want offer to publish. They'll jump on the bandwagon, right. Exactly. Yeah. Jump on your bandwagon <laughs> now that you've done all the legwork and gotten it yeah. successful. <laughs> yeah. I'm a real rookie with this uh, Zoom business, Preston. Sure. Are you, you able to hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Um, Ingram. Yes. Uh, you mentioned it before. I, I viewed the video where you mentioned that uh, last night I was viewing some. And can you expand on that a little bit more? Expound on it, I should say. Absolutely. Don't mind. So when you're publishing, uh, there's three places I suggest you publish your self-publishing. There's three places I suggest you self-publish your book to. One, right. you want to put your book on Amazon right? because um, Amazon is the 800-pound gorilla in the publishing world. They're right. doing the vast majority of the sales um, okay. these days. So mm-hmm. uh, for most authors, 90 to 95% of your book sales will be from Amazon. Okay. Um, however, Ingram... Mm-hmm is your second option because Ingram, which is, you know, uh, a publisher that's been around forever, they have Ingram Spark, which is their self-publishing branch. And you can upload your book to them and they will publish it for you everywhere. So they'll put it on Apple, they'll put it on Barnes and Noble, they'll put it on Kobo, they'll put it on, um, uh, you know, pretty much any bookstore you can possibly think of, you know, uh, they'll put it in England, they'll put it in Australia, they'll put it in, you know, South Africa, they'll put it like basically all over the world. Uh, Ingram Eason has for very, very small markets where there's just not enough of an establishment to have a base. They'll have, they have machines where you can print your book out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So people can go to this machine and scroll through, find a book they want, and it will print the book. It's amazing technology. It'll just print that book for them right there. So, I mean, they've got a reach better than anybody. So you want to get on there. And if you're a Christian publisher, you have to be on Ingram because Ingram has a Christian branch that uh, called, um, uh, oh, it escapes me right now, Spring Arbor. Uh, and Spring Arbor is who supplies all the Christian bookstores and all the churches. So if you're a Christian pub- self-published, you need to be on Ingram and you need to get in their Spring Arbor catalog because that's how you're going to get into all those Christian bookstores and churches is through Ingram. And then the last one is Google Plus because in this, this is a pro tip because very like I don't know anybody who teaches this and it's one of the biggest missed opportunities uh in Google Plus is the one thing that nobody like Ingram or Book Buddy or like any of these guys put the book on and Google actually sells a whole lot of books to the less developed world it's not really big in the United States and such mm-hmm. but in other countries like um you know, for example, we we have a Spanish edition of this, and we sell a lot through Google Plus into 
South America, which you know otherwise would be very hard to get to because uh, they don't have Amazon, for example. So Google Plus is another place where you want to you know list your book. Um, so those are the the three big ones uh, where you want to be published. And you know, as I say in in my course, I'll do a complete breakdown of how to list your book on all of those places and uh, even give you a pro tip on how to list it on Ingram for free. They usually charge. You usually got to pay um, to do that, that, but the, the way one. to get it done for free. So, What's what's the charge generally? $50. It's usually oh. $50 per book. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big thing, but, but why pay it if you don't have to? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? There's just so much to digest. Uh, questions will come, I'm sure. There is yeah. a lot. Definitely. There, there's, there, there, there really is a lot. And, and that's really why I want to kind of put this together. Um, you know, because there's just so much. And so I really want to kind of put it together in a way that's really simple. Uh, for people and easy to understand and easy to implement and not overwhelming and you where you can just pick those things that are relevant to you uh, you know one of my one of my pet peeves is there's a whole lot of courses out there for nonfiction books right so which is great if you're writing a nonfiction book um, but if you're writing a fiction book like there's very few people talking to you, um, you know, and I mean, it's easier because of SEOing, it's easier to sell like position nonfiction books, but you know, I, I, it, it just doesn't seem fair to me, you know? So, you know, if you're doing fiction, I'm going to help you to make the best fiction book that you can do as well. Um, you know, and really I want to help people to, reach as many people as they can and sell as many books as they can, you know, not just get a bestseller for a day and you're done, you know, kind of thing, you know, it's really, to me, it's really about getting the word out, getting your message out and reaching people because that's why we do it. Right. That's why we're writing um, is, is to reach people and to, teach them something or impact something, you know, or entertain them if nothing else. And, you know, so that's, that's what it's all about. Um, let me just see some of the comments here. Uh, Instagram. Uh, Michelle says I've already joined. Thank you, Michelle, for joining. And there's a few you've already joined and thank you. I'm looking very forward to working with you in the next uh, few months and uh, ongoing. Um, looking forward to hearing more of your tips and going through your course. Thank you for putting this together. What a blessing. Thank you, Michelle. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, any other questions? Nope. Okay. So then I'll, I'll wrap this up. Um, thank you again, everybody who's live on this call or if you've been listening to this call for this long. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your time and I acknowledge your commitment to getting your book done and getting your message out into the world because that is so important because the world is waiting to hear from you and needs to hear your voice and your message. And don't let your brain tell you otherwise because it will know what's in your heart. And let's get people, let's get it out into the world. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this call up if there's no more questions. But I just want to say thank you very much, Preston. Thank I, you, Richard. I'm proud of you. Having known you for many years, I am super proud of you. I am thank God for your accomplishments. I thank God for you allowing the Spirit of God to lead you, which I know he has done in this and that's why i'm looking forward to uh the coaching and and the various things and knowing how detailed a person you are uh, i'm sure it's going to be rich so i give god thanks for you for your sensitivity to his spirit 
Thank you, pal. Thank you. I'll be in touch. All right, that's great. I'm so excited and privileged to hear that. And and Richard, you just put out a book, right? Yes. And yes. What, what, let's let you do a free plug here. Tell everybody the name of your book and a, briefly what it's about in 30 seconds. Well, thank you very much. It is a challenging book. It is called Hidden with Christ in God. And basically, it's going to challenge you to develop a relationship with God and uh, from the things that the Lord has shown me is how to not only uh, establish a relationship, but to maintain a relationship with God, given the fact that he has called us not into religion or denominationalism, but into relationship with him. That's it in a nutshell. Beautiful. That's great. Um, so Thanks, it's available on Amazon. Um, so Hidden with Christ and God yes. by Richard Chandler. Uh, Thank you. For yeah. that Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Okay. And, and last chance, any questions? All right. All right. God bless. Uh, this is the last of these free calls that I'm going to be doing. I will send out the replay uh, for everybody and I'll put a page together with all three replays. If you didn't, you know, uh, get one of the earlier ones, you'll have a chance to go over them. Uh, they will be up until September 10th, and then I'll probably take them down after that. So please, you know, try to get to them by then. Um, if you're interested in working with me, and, you know, to get your book out and or to, you know, get it more exposure, to get it more marketing, to sell more books and to get your message out to more people, sellmorebooksacademy.com. It'll uh, be my pleasure to, to work with you and to help you to reach, find your fans and sell more books. Uh, God bless everyone and have a good night. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Bye.